welcome to worship. It is a joy for us to be together today. A few announcements before we continue with worship. The first is that this is the last weekend to, uh, to donate to the doorstep drive for hygiene kits that our women's groups are organizing. And you'll see the basket in the back. If you have some items you didn't bring, please uh, continue. We will still accept them, so go ahead and bring them to the church and we'll make sure they get where they need to go. For this next month, we're going to be collecting school kit items. And on the insert, you'll, ha you'll see a list of, of items needed. We did this last year. We've done this for a few years now, actually. And uh, we'll be collecting these kits and drawstring bags and shipping them off all over the world. And uh, you might be thinking, well, this is pretty cheap stuff. Well, for our community, we have probably from the church two different places we could go and walk to buy these supplies. They're not expensive. We could go and get them very, they're very accessible. But in other parts of the world, it's not so easy to, to get these types of items. So we are able to collect them and then send them to make them accessible for, for children and other communities to, uh, to have and to learn. So glad that we can contribute, collect, and then distribute these to those in need. If you have any questions, you can talk to Rhonda Dealey, but please bring those items to the church. Now, if you're thinking, well, I don't want to buy just one pencil sharpener, you can buy, of course, however many, or you can write a check, and then we'll kind of round things out so we have all of the necessary um, parts for each of the bags. And second, something's different here. We're all wearing our masks again. You might be a little frustrated or discouraged, but... Uh, this was the, the, the work, the discussion that uh, happened with our Ministry Moving Forward Committee, which is a group of, uh, a diverse group of church members from different areas of ministry. And they discussed, they reviewed our community health and, and heard the recommendations from the county uh, health department. And, and so here we are with masks. And uh, last week, uh, three days we had more infections in our in our county than all of June um, and in Oklahoma they have zero free pediatric ICU beds so as discouraging as this is it's our small effort to help protect our our neighbors and our community so Ladies, you don't have to worry about lipstick now. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> but we'll do this until, uh, uh, until we've decided it's a good, uh, safe way for us to return to no masks. But now we'll just smile with our eyes. So, but it's good for us to be together in, in this way. Um, in addition to uh, the masks, Diane and I will come to the pews with communion. Um, so you can just sit in your pews and we'll bring a wafer only to you in the pews. And uh, there are a few other uh, announcements about that through, throughout the service. So just be sure to read the, uh, the, the small italicized instructions. We've done this, so we kind of know what to do. But uh, we'll get through this together. Uh, so, uh, there are a few other announcements in your bulletin. Please read through them and continue to pray for our community and for our congregation and these organizations. Let us stand now as we are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. 
We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us join in song with hymn number 656. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 16. A food crisis becomes a faith crisis for the Israelites in the wilderness. The hungry people forget God's saving work in the Exodus, and they wish for the food they had in Egypt. Nevertheless, God miraculously meets their needs with manna for bread and quail for meat. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out of the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsively, Psalm 78. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, raining down manna. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. Christians share fundamental unity and diversity. Our unity consists in the one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. Our diversity is expressed in various forms of ministry whose goal is equipping the saints and building up Christ's one body. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. 
but each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he has also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Many of the 5,000 people Jesus fed in the wilderness continued to follow him throughout the countryside. Jesus challenges them to consider the real nature of their quest. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise I invite you to be seated. And Aurora, would you like to come up? It's just you. And that's enough. <laughs> well, have a seat. Aurora, <clears throat> do you like to eat leftovers? Yes. Do you really? 
<laughs> wow, that is not what I was going <laughs> to I do not like eating leftovers. Um, but if you're eating leftovers, it means what? That you're saving something or that you had to, almost too much to eat and you have some that you can have for the next day. Yeah. Well, in the, in the scripture I just read, it's about hungry people. And we are very blessed to very rarely be hungry. And if you are, you can usually go to your cabinet and grab all sorts of food or go to the store and buy all sorts of food. But to have leftovers is a reminder that we are blessed with uh, many things to keep our bodies nourished. Hopefully healthy things, not just Doritos and Dr. Pepper, Aurora, which I know you like. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right. Well, well, Jesus offers us a food that isn't something we eat with our mouths and our hands. It's something that we, that we receive through prayer, and it's something that nourishes us in a, in a, in a much deeper, powerful way. And it's not that there are leftovers, but there's always, always more than enough for us that we can share with others. So you've been fed, Aurora. In a little bit, you'll have a, a wafer that's given to you. It's not going to make your belly stop growling, but it's going to remind you that God is with you and wants to nourish you. And uh, so let's say a prayer. And... God bless you for eating leftovers. I don't like them, but they are a reminder that we have an abundance um, of many different ways. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Good morning, God. Thank you for loving us and blessing us with many things. Amen. Thanks, Aurora. You can head back. I think it's one of my biggest faults that I don't eat leftovers. It's uh, a, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there's a British poet named Lawrence Binion, and he lived in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and he wrote a poem, and I think it's kind of a riddle. And so here's the, here's the poem. I come among the peoples like a shadow, I sit down by each man's side. None sees me, but they look on one another and know that I am there. I am more terrible than armies. I am more feared than the cannon. Kings and chancellors give commands. I give no command to any, but I am listened to, more than kings and more than passionate orators. I am first and last to be felt of the living. What am I? I am hunger. None sees me, but they look on one another and know that I am there. I am listened to more than kings. I am first and last to be felt of the living. I am hunger. Hunger is that uh, humbling word of desperation. And we see hunger so clearly in our readings today. In the first uh, scripture that, that Chris read, the people of God were in the midst of a famine. And in fact, that is the, much of the narrative of the people of Israel in the Old Testament centers around times of famine and scarcity. The people of God had been wandering in the desert after having been freed from Egypt. And they were hungry and they were desperate. And scripture says today that they complained like a petulant child. They whined and said, if only we died in Egypt. And then the God of mercy and abundance rained down manna, some sustenance, a means of life for them. 
This uh, very familiar story of the manna raining down is not only about God's abundance. It's not only about God's grace and mercy even to the petulant believer. Nor is it only about God's desire that all people be fed with real physical food. It is about trust. Trust that God would provide for them and that God would be with them. Because each day when the dew would lift and the manna was left, if they tried to collect and store up that food, afraid that it wouldn't come the next day, the manna wouldn't last. It had a short expiration date. The manna was a lesson in trust that God would be with them and that God would answer when they called and that God would provide them not only with that food that perishes, but a food that endures for eternal life. We hear Jesus say today, I am the bread of life. And every Christmas, we sing the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and we read the story of Christ's birth in that small town, Bethlehem. And Beth, Bethlehem, translated, means house of bread. So from Bethlehem, Jesus comes and says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Well, a few chapters back in the Gospel of John, we read the story of the woman from Samaria at the well. Now, the people of Samaria were looked down upon, down upon because they were mixed race. They were the people of Israel who had started families with people outside of that tradition. And so anytime we hear a story in scripture that lifts up the people of Samaria, Jesus is teaching us about racial prejudice. And so this woman in chapter 4 of John, who's not only a Samaritan, but she's looked down upon because of her history with men. And she'd gone to the well at noon, Jacob's well, to draw water, hoping that at noon she wouldn't see many people. But Jesus comes up to her and asks her for water. And after talking for a while, Jesus offers her living water. And she says, Sir, give me this water, that I may never be thirsty. And in the next chapter of John, we hear the story of how the physical hunger of a stadium-sized crowd of people, 5,000 families, had been miraculously alleviated with just a few loaves of bread and fish. And those same people surround Jesus in our gospel reading today, still hungry for something and curious, wanting something more. And Jesus says to them, it is my Father who gives you bread from heaven, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said, Sir, give us this bread always. And then Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Though, uh, though few, if any of us, gathered for worship today know the fear and desperation of food insecurity or have been parched and literally starving, we all know that consistent dull ache of knowing that there's something more to life than this. More than business meetings and family trips more than football games and dance recitals and our social clubs, more than the daily headlines of conflict and disaster, more the conflict among relationships. There must be something more. Because maybe what we have been eating is junk food, that perishable, superficial thing that doesn't truly nourish us, and instead leaves us feeling sick and unfulfilled. Well, this week, I was cleaning out one of my drawers, and I found a letter from my kids. 
It's brief. I'm going to read it to you. We love reading with you. We love sleeping with you. We love playing with you. Happy birthday, Mom. Last page. We love you. I read that, and my heart broke. And here's why. They wrote it a couple of years ago, um, but I'm not sure if they wrote it today, if they would phrase it the same way. Because I'm tired and distracted, and I don't read to them like I used to. I don't sit and play with them as much as I used to. Instead, I let them off to themselves while I zone out on my phone. Goodness knows I love them, but what they love and desire from me isn't really the toy that I found that I just bought just because, or the movie, or the donuts I give them more than once a week. Those perishable things that don't last. What they love and desire from me is to be present with them, to be engaged with them. They are fed and satiated not with donuts or toys or to play by themselves. They find fullness by being together in relationship with one another. Psalm 1611 says, in your presence is fullness of joy. And I was just thinking, if uh, God were to write a letter to us, what God would say. Maybe he would say, I love reading the Bible with you. Or I love walking with you. I love sitting in silence and prayer with you. I love being present with you and bringing you fullness of joy. Some of these non-perishable gifts. And perhaps after reading that letter, you, like I did after reading my kids, feel brokenhearted because the things that we've been doing to feed ourselves or find fullness or joy or life aren't the things that God desires or God provides. Jesus says, do not work for the food that perishes for the superficial, the worldly things, but seek the food that endures for eternal life, the bread of heaven, the bread of life, relationship with God. Well, this week, Jen Betts and I attended a four-day conference. I don't see Jen. She must be worshiping online today. Uh, we attended a four-day conference on justice work in the church and in the community. And we heard Bible studies about, about justice, and we heard individuals from all over the country talk about uh, topics like juvenile detention, about the five-year-old who was arrested, or the 16-year-old who was charged with rocket launchers from throwing an orange out of school bus. We heard stories about predatory lending and climate justice and its impact on water quality or utilities. And we heard about hunger. It's proven that a kid can't focus in school when they're hungry, and so they, they act out, they fall behind, and the scarcity of, and the, and the cycle of scarcity and hunger continues. And the hungry seek out the cheapest food, which is usually junk food, which over the long term leads to health issues, which are often left untreated because of the cost of health care. And I left the conference frustrated and angry, and I felt desperate to find a way to address these issues. Because people are literally hungry. Before Jesus spoke about spiritual food in our gospel today, he sat down with the crowd of people and fed their bellies, filled their bellies. And he said, you disciples, address the physical needs of hunger and be in relationship with them. Care for them. Be my hands and feet. Provide for them. Jesus said, you, are, uh, you came looking for me, 
not because you saw God in my actions, but because I fed you. You shouldn't be so concerned about things like food. Instead, you should be seeking the eternal life that I can give you. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Come to me and never hunger. Trust that I am with you, will answer you, and will provide for you. We're all here today because we hunger and thirst for something more, each of us. And these readings today draw us in, uh, to a relationship and trust with God, God our Father who is the bread of life, and they compel us to have that relationship and trust with our communities and our neighbors who are also seeking something more. The last many months, our confession and forgiveness at the beginning of worship has been based on these texts. And uh, we've read these, these words. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. And then the pastor responds with the words of forgiveness that, God, that come from God. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, we are shown God's mercy. We are forgiven and loved into abundant life. So what are you hungry for? Maybe you're hungry for hope. When there is so much uh, discouraging and despairing things. Maybe you're hungering for worth when people tell you you have none. Maybe you're hungering for relationships when we feel alone. But we all hunger for life, a life that can only come from God, that compels us to live and to care for one another and to trust that God will provide and answer when we call. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, uh, our bread of life, nourish our bodies and our hearts and our souls as we live in this world. Help us to provide your care towards others. Help us to be in relationship with those who are lonely. And help us to look to you when we are lost. These things we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 485. <laughs>
as you are able. Together we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he was again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. But I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ, and sustained by the Spirit. We offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforest, defend species at risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry, reassure those who are despairing, and accompany those who are imprisoned. We pray especially for Pat, Lois, Martha, Shirley, Laura Martin, Ruth, Brad, Laura Hafke, Tamara, Orloin, and Phil, as well as our homebound members, all unable to worship this weekend, and all family, friends, and even enemies we name now, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is free. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, Prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. From our pews, let us share Christ's peace with those around us and with those worshiping with us online.
Please stand as you are able. Jesus, bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come to the feast.
Please stand as you are able. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let us join in song with hymn number 655. By the Spirit. Christ, God's love. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Amen. 